This is Lips LA on Dash Radio. We're with the man who needs no introduction. No, no, Mr. go ahead and introduce. Mr. Gene Simmons, 100 million records worldwide, which is pretty incredible. And we got a lot of stuff to talk about. We want to talk about the book, The Legend and Mythology of the 27 Club. We want to talk about the soda. And we have so much to get the tour, obviously. So we have a lot to get into. I'm just here because I'm Scott's friend. And, well, you and I have been friends for years. And uh, there's so much to talk about, Gene. I want to actually take it back to the beginning, the beginning, beginning of Israel. Of, t- of time. <laughs> the beginning of In time. In 1802. My, uh, my family's from Israel, too. My, my second cousin is the president of I'm Israel. So, I'm so sorry. So mean, there's Netanyahu? a connection. Uh, no, the president. Ruby, oh, the, Ru- the other Ruby guy, Rivlin. the one that nobody knows. No one knows, but yeah. <laughs> that is my cousin. So um, take us back to the beginning, because I know you went there. Not quite. I, I guess you met your half-brother there um, some years back. It, it was very strange. Nick missed that trip. We, I, was, I was on that trip. That's what I just I said. You, Nick though. was on the trip. Shannon arranged Sophie, it. Sophie missed, Sophie missed the it. trip. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we had a TV show that when well they were the knuckleheads were this small and then what how old were you then 20 but it's all right that's a long time ago <laughs> now yeah, you're 56 yeah it's almost a decade ago <gasps> so we went uh, it's funny to hear young people talk about age it's like it's like, yeah, a, a, good, it's like a, a baby saying i think i've got a gray hair i do have a gray <laughs> hair you don't even have a tooth in i your do skull have a gray hair quiet. okay and maurice white earth wind and fire <laughs> september because you're from Haifa, correct? I'm, I am from Haifa. Yeah. I know I don't look Swiss. Yeah. And we went there. Um, somebody had the bright idea, his mother, that I should at least see where she, I was she, born. Yeah. She tracked him down, didn't she? She tracked it. So these are, so these are his half-siblings that I guess... Your half-brother. I, I was told nothing. Yeah. My father was a hound, and he died, I don't know, 80 or so with a 35-year-old woman there with... By the way, one leg amputated. Wow. Yeah, it's, like, it's like an Everything is Illuminated novel or something. He's, it's a very bizarre story. But very, that was the first time you returned back there since you were a kid, right? When you just went we, we visited where I was born. Yes, you can video this on your cell phone. It's okay. No, that's, that's part of it. It's a oh, live it's part stream. of the thing? Yeah. It's part of it. Young people. <laughs> it's part of this generation. <laughs> yeah. Social media. It's a whole thing. I've yeah. been waiting all my life for everybody to wear baseball hats, although you don't play no. baseball. Actually, that's the money bag soda. We can I get, own we that, can get actually. It. We'll see, get into that. See the New York sign? She, oh, she doesn't Lord. own that. I did my research. Um, so, uh, make I'll a long story short, I'll although I love the sound of my own voice, God help me, I will help me, <laughs> is we visited different places and all that, and I showed my uh, Shannon, look at that cactus fruit and over there and that little Mount Carmel, by the way, is not a mountain. The biblical Mount Carmel, it's like a little hill. There's nothing to it. And then we uh, went to dinner. The cam- camera crew and Nick and Shannon and I, and we pull up to this restaurant, and no exaggeration, so help me, the place is packed, kids, families, all that, and you can see through the open window, and a tall, good-looking guy, a little taller than I am, thinner, better-looking, you know, comes over with a white shirt, and I think it's the maitre d', <laughs> expecting Mr. Simmons to come, you know, with an Israeli accent. And he says, hi, I'm Kobe, I'm your brother. And I just about... Lost it. Yeah, so that's one of the things that everybody, you know, there there are certain things you have to fudge for that sort of show, but that's one of the things everyone's like, oh, clearly that's fake. Like, there's no way. Well, what's Such the, he's your cinema, half-brother, yeah, right? But it, that, was the, that was the only, that was like one of the most unplanned reaction moments. That, like, he, he walked up and he, was, he could say whatever he wanted, and Dad did not know he was going to be there. He had never met his brother. And there, you know, like everyone who watched that, we were inundated with like, "Come on, guys, stop casting these actors!" And I'm like, I swear to God, this is our bro- my uncle I never met. And, it gets uh, weirder. Every yeah. everybody, everybody in, in the, the restaurant, restaurant were related. In That's some amazing. Way. Yeah. So there was a there was a whole there was two twin sisters that he had. Six that, foot two twin sisters. And when you look at their faces, you're like, "Okay, it's you as a woman. Got it. It's you. <laughs> it's <laughs> nice. It's, oh <laughs> my God." And then you see like another like a shorter woman and go like, "Oh, it's you, but shorter." And, and Okay, and then the two kids, it's like, oh, it's Nick and Soph when they were that age. Yes, exactly. They're kid, they're His years. dad's jeans are so, and it's not a pun, don't say the joke, don't do it. <laughs> okay, so he sometimes, okay. So the two kids, like we had childhood photos, we put that next to the kids, and it's like his dad's jeans are so yeah, persistent. Wow. They're like clones. But like, you're still close with the whole, with the new yeah, family. Kobe's that, the new, good, yeah, Kobe's yeah. good, yeah. You he, told me that you text a lot with your... Yeah, they live, I think they live in London now, right? Uh, Kobe does. The strange part is, I used to teach sixth grade. God help them which, all. Which was my next question. <laughs> but but strangely and coincidentally, Kobe is also a sixth grade teacher. Wow, and they had amazing. Met, uh, yeah, weird. Because he used to teach in Spanish Harlem, right? 
Yeah. What uh, grades were you teaching back then? Sixth. Sixth grade. Wow. <laughs> yeah, well, there, there was a, yeah, you can't do that well, anymore there was either. The weird, no jokes. It's nothing. We won't make any jokes. There's a, uh, there was a weird moment too with that K Sarah Sarah song on that trip, where we were on in the car. We were visiting his father's grave, and in the car on the way there, we were just playing this this the remix of the old song. I think it was Et, Etta, uh, Etta Fitzgerald, Et, K Sarah Sarah. No, Ella. 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 That's Doris Day was Jesus. the original one. Doris Day is the one we were listening to. That's the one. Uh, and so we were listening to K, Sada, Sada, whatever will be, will be. And then, like, one of the siblings starts crying because we played it again when they got in the car. And she's like, What's the matter? He's like, Well, that's on the tombstone that he had never visited of his wow. father. So we walked there. He's like, Yeah, that was his favorite expression. And we just happened to have it on shuffle that day. How incredible. So, so many weird things that happened that day. Wow. Uh, yeah. That's amazing. So, and at some point you were teaching, and then the band started, and you were toying around with the idea of makeup. And were there other characters that you toyed around with instead of the demon, or was that was that the first go at it? It's you were funny, like, this it's is funny you say characters because I don't make characters. Never, but... That's all right. No, it's, These are semantics. Yeah. I'm not anti-semantic. Oh. <laughs> we never we never thought Prepare of it for that the way. dad puns. Everybody, <laughs> prepare yourself. Dad jokes <laughs> or dead jokes because <laughs> soon I will be. So they it want they it meets. Okay. You keep talking. You <laughs> and, and that will lead us to our next segue on the 27th. As a matter of fact, but, Peter Chris has now changed the lyric of Beth. No, no, no. Death, I hear you calling. <laughs> okay, well, well so, no one's going to tweet at me about this. No, they don't know anything. Oh, I <laughs> don't care. It's too I late. I care. Oh, that's right. My yeah. son cares. I have to live here. You're, go when, you're gone in what, two when, years, Tops? <laughs> when is this uh, Chris Rock and... Uh, and Seinfeld, Seinfeld will won't, not won't tour play college campuses. Wow, yeah, that's campuses. pretty crazy. Because somebody's going to get upset. That's what comedy is. That's true. Yeah, well, transgression is the uh, is the whole point. You do have a great sense of humor because I've been to breakfast. With I you. am a, a joke. Lot, there's a lot of jokes being made at breakfast. I will say, but so just take me that for one second. You actually remember the jokes at breakfast? I 100. percent I do. dare you. Because it reminded me of like my Larry David sensibility. We were there with, by the way, there's a bunch of weird people that there that day. Oh, there we were with like, Sophie and we were and Lindsay Wixon. Lindsay Wixon was with us too. And I think that. Uh, one of your other friends dropped in out of the out of the blue. Anyway, I'm sorry. Okay, well, I digress. Or you digress. Dropped you in. have friends? But uh, <laughs> I do. But so you didn't toy with other makeup at the time, Gene, uh, going back to what I was asking. It was just really, you actually had that idea for the demon from the get-go, or was it other ideas that you could have? Uh, you know, singularity is another big words like gymnasium. One day, we're rehearsing in a rat-infested fire trap. No windows, nothing. That's so we could turn it up and play. And one day, for some reason, one of us, I can't remember who, said, let's go down to the Woolworths, which was a sure. chain of stores. You've heard of it? I have. Uh -huh. and Is it New Yorker? I think they're out of business. Maybe New York. Yeah. New York. And we went there and decided, you know, sometimes you buy flies and plastic uh, ice cubes to put in people's... I remember. Stuff, all that yeah. dumb stuff. Whoopee cushions. That people today don't do. <laughs> and whoopee cushion. Yes. Not Goldberg. Yes. <laughs> whoopee cushions. See what I did there? He loves, he loves the electric gum and the whoopee. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. I miss all that stuff. That was so fun. Three oh, Stooges here. But of course, somebody gets upset. That's yeah, the whole true, idea true. of it. But you were, so you went, about, you went to what was smiling. Or kill. <laughs> smiling. Um, and so we, uh, somebody said, let's go. And, and so we decided to buy clown makeup, clown white and clown black. And we bought a $15 mirror that warped itself once we leaned it against the wall upstairs, Tenney's 23rd Street. And all I know is without speaking very much, we started to put the makeup on the faces and pretty much the makeup that went on is the makeup that continues 45 years later on half the world's number one gold record award-winning group of all time. Amazing. We already talked about that. Interesting yeah. part of the story is over now. Yeah, but yeah. I, I told in Nick, all categories. That's right. I told Nick when I was a kid, one of the biggest highlights of my life was like the unveiling of Kiss. I remember it was a huge thing. The unmasking. And the unmasking, yeah, yeah, the yeah. unveiling. And there was so. I wasn't alive. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> alive. That's his excuse. <laughs> but I was alive. I was so alive. I remember that. Um, so I want to jump to... What do you have? A dead thing on your necklace? What is that? It's a dinosaur head. They're dead. Yeah. I want to jump to you. I want to jump to Is that a new band, Dinosaur Head? There's, there, there, was a, there is called, a band called yeah. Dinosaur, Dinosaur Junior. Dinosaur Head Junior, true. You mean who was on the Kiss tribute band that I put? The, the, Dinosaur the Jr. album? No. Dinosaur Junior was on doing Going Blind, which I wrote. You have so many things on, that are relevant to me that you don't tell me sometimes. Like you're, he, he did this thing where, do you know the curse of the visitors to his house? This, is, the, not, this is my curse. I've not been invited every, over the house. Every, no, here's the, here's the curse. Everyone I've ever worshipped, like Bob Dylan, whatever, he has a story about me meeting them 
when I was too young to remember. Well, well, you make, tell me Jimmy like Page a, was like a, house, right? It's like an evil genie granted all of my wishes and then gave me amnesia about them. When they come over them. to the house. <laughs> it makes no sense. I always go like, oh, I love this record. He goes, oh, yeah, he held you when you were a baby. The go, same with Jimmy what, Page, will he right? come over? Will he come over now? And they go, no, no he's busy. <laughs> like, what the hell? I just I just got into that guy. He's like, yeah, sorry, you missed the boat. Wasn't like, Jimmy Page over your house when you were a kid? No, like, yeah, before I was old enough to remember. Yeah. What because, was that like? Because you're a sadist. So you were hanging you out hate, and you Jewish. hate me. You same, hate me. Same thing. <laughs> you hate me. So, so, but I'll, I'll remember a pivotal Bob Dylan moment. held me, apparently. And then um, threw you down. Too, much. Threw, too heavy. Yeah. Give, we me were, another, uh, give me another. We were in London. I was asked to host the some kind of classic rock award thing. And all Nick is talking about, you know, sitting beside me is, oh, Brian May and Jeff Beck and, uh, you know, all this stuff. Yeah. So I said, Jeff, come here. <laughs> and I just like yeah, what's up? Brian, like, <laughs> then Brian came over. I don't remember which one it was. It was, it was both. I mean, Jeff came, over, came he, over. Jeff came over like with, the, with say, this with this tone, say, this energy. Say hello, like, to, say hello yeah, to Nick. Yeah, how you doing? What's up? How's it going? I'm like, no, it gets it gets worse. It gets worse. It gets okay. worse. Jimmy Page is like above and beyond. So the we're guy. in New York City, and my back is turned to people, and we're uh, Nick and I and just just off an talking. airplane, so I'm in sweatpants and, and sweatpants. Jimmy sweat comes again. over and puts his head, hand on my shoulder, and I said, "Bitch, take that motherfucker." No, no sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no. Is that is that okay language? Yeah, it's yes. fine. Just do it. We're on Dash Radio, of course, so, it's okay. So uh, Jimmy comes over. Hey, Jimmy, how you doing? Yeah, Gene, what's up? <laughs> Nick started to cry. No, no, no. Okay, so here, yes, no, you did. No, wow. I, I'm not gonna not admit the. So here's where here's are the, the pictures, pictures not, Nick? Not gonna Listen, admit. the actual story is that I held it together till he left, and then I started to cry. So is there a picture? Because if he, there's not a picture, it didn't here's, happen, wh- so. here's why I started. Yes, it was not a, just, yes. Look, a listen, listen. It was yeah. not just because I met him. There's, there's mitigating factors here. He had said that he had he had talked to Eddie Kramer, who's his old engineer sure. and, and somebody he works with. And I, I had been doing demos with Eddie, and he said like Eddie's been telling me that your stuff's great. Yeah. So I thought like not only did I meet wow. my hero, but he was like he knew of me. I mean that's And he's like I can't wait to hear the stuff. And I was like, huh, 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 huh. and he walked away. And I was like, did I do okay? Was I normal? And mom's like, you did great, sweetie. And I'm like, I just want to make a good impression. You, yeah, he was yeah, fine. So you were sweating profusely. I'm about to show you. It was the... more like those those movie tears where you're sitting there and just one tear rolls down the cheek. And I'm like, I think I'm okay. Amazing. <laughs> so Jennifer Lawrence is walking by, and uh, I don't know. We were at some event. Uh, it was a CAA party. Yeah. Oh, she's so hot or smart, whatever. The I didn't hell say think. anything of okay, the sort. Okay, I'm sorts. sorry. What did you say? Jesus. Who my company? I said, look, it's Jennifer Lawrence. Like, <laughs> so said, there she can, is. Jennifer, come on over. <laughs> yeah, that's, back, I, I, Dad, you can't just call people. And he's like, no, I don't why care. not? He doesn't care about anything. Nick, you know, so, we used to manage her back in the day. Yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't know that she was going to become. You dropped this. A name. Oh yeah, it's true. It is true. It's relevant to the story. It's, I'm yes. looking. I'm looking for the photo of Jimmy. You're not going to win this one. He's the biggest socialite of this. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I hear Jimmy's... Super uh, mention. <laughs> the sad part is sometimes... Oh, here's uh, here's Brian. But oh, the so, sa- the sad, here, so wait, yeah. while you're looking for the... So the, the Brian so Brian May comes over in the same event, and I am also freaking out, and he goes like... Amazing, let's look at that picture. He leans Amazing. in, yeah. So there's Jimmy. Oh, well, there's you, but where, where is Nick? This is Jimmy. I've got, I've got the photo. Oh. This is the picture, in case you guys can't see. You should be able to see. Amazing photo. So J- Amazing. Brian May walks over uh, of Queen, uh, in case the youngins don't know. Um, and he, he he's very very nice right away. There's, yeah, there's me and Jimmy and the, and the young. Wow, Same. you look about 12 years old here. Yeah, it's Can not, you guys see I'm this? About 18, something like That's that. That's Nick, 12, 18. Wow. So Brian May walks over after the I forget about Jeff Beck, and he goes, so I'm wearing this. I, I think it was this ring actually. I was wearing this. I was trying to be cool, whatever. And uh, he <laughs> takes my hand. And he kind of goes like he goes like, good to meet you. <laughs> he, good to meet you. And he slams his hand down and hurts his hand on my ring. The okay. golden hands that play guitar. Shit. Like I think I, I he was like ah. Rhapsody. and I was like, no, I've damaged, <laughs> I've damaged Brian May's golden hands. And he goes, oh, that's okay. And I'm like, I'm going to go to the top floor of this building and jump. And this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. And then later, you know, he came and he was, he's fine. He but can I never play guitar again. I, yeah, like literally, I thought like, oh, I just broke Jimmy Brian May's wow. finger, so you know, jo- on so his le- on his left hand, the right. hand that you need to play. I was. Like sweating So Josh Stone is walking by backstage and uh, talking to his mom. Said, "Maybe, sh- maybe Nick should go on." Great, yeah. And this is so cool how you whore me like Josh, a piece wanna, of meat. It's so fun when you do that. Josh, I love you want to come over to the house and you know, kind of. The, well, I'll be in. in the, you know, we whore him out. <laughs> he, really, he, he 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 will do this thing sometimes where there will be a woman, just any any, just this poor woman trying to go about her day like a human being, and he will go like. 
hi, my son's single. And he'll point to me and I'll be there. And I'll go, first of all, you don't even know if that's true. I, I'm not right now. And second of all, no, no, ah, wait, wait, ah, no, like, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Single means you're not married. Oh, God. You know, so mom's driving here now because she had a sixth sense. She heard you say that over the ether and she's on her way to just throw you single off this chair. Single only means you're not married. No, it doesn't anymore. Well, anyway, I do, I do want to get into your book, Gene, because the legend and mythology of the 27th Club. stop talking about it and buy it? Well, everyone should buy it. But um, let's talk about it for a little bit. Amy Winehouse, Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin. Do you think there's a coincidence you, there or is it, there's a mythology behind it? Said, it, says it, in, it says it in the book. The book is like, yeah. So there's a, uh, we interviewed a, a neuroscientist that I interviewed for HuffPost back in the day. about. Uh, he, he used to work for the FBI and he did uh, a lot of studies on you know various pathologies. And he basically went out to say... That there is a, there is a small spike at around the late twenties, and but there's a bigger spike in the fifties. Um, so the, it it is essentially that's why the title's a myth. It is essentially a myth, but the the kernel of truth that's in there is that whenever uh, the time at which conditions like depression, anxiety, and schizophrenia tend to manifest themselves is around mid to late twenties. So there's a, there's a correlation between a super high pressure, high attention job mixed with substances and then your genetics kick in at a certain age so there's a sort of like the perfect storm of influences that kind of makes people uh you know kind of have a rough time right around that age so that, and sure the, and also you never the, know what people are going through right these people are on right. top of the world they're selling but he, he, records the, 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 the neuroscientist point of view as far as i read it from his uh, the interview we did with him um I, I was i did the interview and i i sent it to pops and uh the neuroscientist essentially said his name is dr james fallon um and he he said like the, the, it's it's the perfect it's almost always the perfect storm thing it's you have a genetic predisposition to one or one or more of these conditions like addiction or uh, uh, schizophrenia or depression etc and then you add on top of that a a culture where here's all the free drugs in the world that you could possibly want and you know one one will, a person who's vulnerable to that one will get right. you such over the and edge. then and then you have this thing where it's someone with anxiety being subjected to the most attention you can give a human being so it's like any street corner attention 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 so it's awesome until your anxiety kicks in at a certain age and then you realize you're having a rough time and so what do you do you then medicate with the drugs you've already been given so it's this yeah so that that's kind of where it comes from essentially is what his point of view was it's this perfect storm that tends to happen to people with a certain genetic disposition and a certain confluence of influences around them at the same time. Um, and if anything, this might encourage the conversation about mental health, right? Because I think it's an important well, conversation I'm, to have. I'm very fortunate. I don't think my wiring uh, is even interested by DNA and drugs and alcohol or anything like that. I literally have never, not even cigarettes. I'm really boring. I love sweets, though. Although, oh. although you are the CEO of a new cannabis company. Well, there's that. Right. And our sodas are in 7-Elevens. There's a lot of stuff There's a lot of stuff. On. Yeah, but you don't have enough time. And <laughs> in either case, I prefer you pay me for it. But, <laughs> but in all seriousness, nobody talks about it. I'm, I'm on record doing uh, either MSNBC or someplace like that. We're talking about, and I was a jackass. You know, when you think, when you get rich and famous, and you think you know it all. Right. You're looking at them. I'm an idiot in areas of this sort of self-aggrandizement, mm. big words. And they were talking about, you know, people need help. And I'm going, you're a grown-up. You're no longer on your mom's teeth. You know, get over it. Sure. Go get, you know, the guys that stand on top of buildings and threaten to jump. I'm the first guy, I'm, I'm quoted as saying, I'm the first guy that said, jump, motherfucker. Stop right. wasting our time. And he and I talked at length about this. And it's sort of like, about I, I, think, I think he it's not just a... That set me straight. Well, so we talked essentially, and I said, uh, I, I think that it's not a uh, him problem. I think it was that general. I mean, I don't think, I, I honestly think the the term depression is not helping because it sounds to to that, especially to a generation before ours, it just sounds like a mood you're in. It doesn't sound like a con, a, a mental condition. Like schizophrenia sounds very official yeah. and pathological, and it sounds like something you can be afflicted with. When you say the word depression, that's also what you say when you're just in a bad mood. It's just not the same thing. And so when people kept asking him about depression, that's all he, I mean, that's, that's who had ever explained to him, you know, what clinical was versus just, I'm in a bad mood. So when he heard like there were people who were just as lucky as he was, who were sad, that's all he heard was yeah. they were just sad. He was like, what the hell are you talking about? You know, you're ungrateful. He didn't, he had no idea that like, it takes a, 10 million people to go like, no, no, no. It's just a word that sounds like sadness that actually means this, this 
mental condition. I mean, then we watched this Stephen Fry documentary where. Oh my God. St- and then we like. Which I, documentary I, I, was that? I learned more helping him edit this book than I I knew. I mean, there's this documentary he did about about his depression. I mean, he oh. Stephen Fry is like a ten on the scale. Like, there's a scene of him that we watched that we couldn't get over where. He's getting out of this car and well, it just... Well, even before then, he's right, right. talking about it lucidly. I suffer from depression. Mm. I know it. you may not understand and it. And he's like, logically, I'm very happy. Like, in my brain, like, I know I'm very fortunate. Like, yeah. this all occurs to me. And then he and I watched this YouTube video of him getting out of his car and you just, you kind of just see it hit him. Like, he has an episode, like, on the camera guys were lucky enough to catch this moment right. where he goes, I'm fine. And then all of a sudden he just drops and he leans against the car. And Dad and I are like, like wow, it's like... You know, no one. He's describing. This feels hopeless. I could easily fall into. I'm not putting words in his mouth. You know, yeah. into a very dangerous suicidal area. And so he's acting. And he's almost he's like, like acting that. as the narrator, observing himself, right. but feeling all that. It it's a very strange, shocking. Yeah. shocking. Even so, yesterday, I mean, Selena he Gomez. And, he and I both. Business. Right. He and I right. both didn't know the extent. I mean, I had a little bit because I'm exposed to like millennial social media sure. that talks about this a lot. But who? If you never see that scene of that guy who just, he's totally happy and then all of a sudden his brain just betrays him, gene- you know, genetically, but, how would you know the difference between, uh, oh, these are just rich people complaining? I mean, like, that seems totally intuitive unless someone tells you this thing exists and it's a, it's a, it's a disease that people have and they're, they don't want to be that way. They're so just, in a way, it, this might spark the conversation about mental I mean, it's health spark, we, and we, encourage we, it we because talk, I think it's a good thing to We, talk, to, we talked for hours and yeah. I, I, we bounced off each other. It's, it's, I, I, don't think, I don't think people of his age, uh, I don't think anyone gave a crap, honestly. Yeah. I don't think or, anyone or talked about of, it. Or right. most people. Middle I think most America. people today, even young people, probably don't un- really get it because it you, sounds like just a mood you're in. You guys... If sounds, somebody, especially guys, because we're supposed to be, you know, immune to emotion. Tough, you know, yeah. how are you feeling? Fine. Yeah. You know, I don't go. You know what? When I was a child of four, and you don't go into right. that thing, it's not because right. nobody really cares. No one cares. They're all concerned with their own lives, but hopefully, and nobody here is a doctor or a shrink. Hopefully, it'll encourage people to just talk. Right. Just have and both people who are near you, friends, enemies, hey, what's up, how you doing? I had a bad day, yeah, me too. That's sort of, because we're not trained, Right. you and I, sure. not so much him, he's a tough cookie, but we're trained not to share our emotions, yeah. especially the guys, I'm feeling really sad today. A guy goes, yeah, anyway, yeah, whatever. the ball yeah. game. <laughs> right. But you guys I, have always had an incredible relationship. Is there anything that's I don't ever been- personally like him, but I have to because <laughs> he's my son. <laughs> Is there anything off limits that you don't Laugh, talk about? Laugh, it's a joke. No, we. we and nothing's we, uh, off limits. No. We, I mean, it's funny because he and I have incredibly different. <laughs> we we agree about a lot of things. We have incredibly different worldview. I mean, this is what the Vice article. I wrote a Vice yeah. article on Father's Day a couple of, uh, a year or two ago. Yeah, what is, is that? Ca- the, is what that is the it art- called, Nick? <laughs> it's, it's, I have to swear to say the title if that's right. That's okay. It's uh, the Vice article is called uh, "My Dad Gene Simmons is Full of Shit and So Are You." Uh, that's that. sort of it's sort of like about how people. Uh, <laughs> I, I I think that there's a, there's a the, the epidemic in this country right now is uh, based on not being able to disagree civilly about even stuff you find really, really awful. And I think that the, the alternative to disagreeing civilly is violence. So I think that even if someone is saying something that at your very soul offends you, I think you still need to just talk. So he and I, like, he and I have a couple disagreements that go to, like, the core of our beings. But at the end of the day, the bigger priority has to be we all have to walk out the door peacefully together and eat, so, so eat nothing's food. off so, limits really no we know i don't think we ever censor ourselves at home especially no i mean if it's the conversation well, at home would probably he's, cause he's got a, a mother back of my head used to come out farther but you know that <laughs> <laughs> i was but actually like, asked, mom, mom's mom's farther uh down the sort of like the millennial spectrum than i am I'm, i kind of consider myself in the middle i have i have like some views go over there and some go over right. there, and and he's a, a little bit righter than us, although not as he's not as conservative as people think he is. But he he makes conservative noises. Um, More fun, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean he it's, uh, but I, I think that that needs to be 
everywhere. I mean, Definitely. you need, you got it. You got to hang out with everybody. I think there should be new hats. Make America spectacular, and then people won't know what <laughs> who. Yeah, what? And it's just purple, and you don't know like who's that. For? Well, I want to a lot of, a lot of respect to you because Nick is an incredible son. He's an incredible human being, and, and just a great guy. Not because you're my friend, we but hang because out a lot. because it could be that you could have turned sorry, out. I'm sorry. What's the you could have turned friend? out? I don't know. The... <laughs> yeah. You could yeah, have turned out horribly wrong, but you turned out that. great, so it's actually pretty cool. But um, I did want to talk about, for a moment, you know, KISS is one of the most successful bands in the history of music merchandising-wise, and the business of KISS has always been super interesting to me, Gene. And I was asking Nick, are there, have there ever been products that you've, like, pitched to your dad that you... I told her about Soph in the, the Google uh, cases, but I don't know if we, I've ever pitched anything, have I? I don't know if I... We, we talk all the time, like, what about this, what about that? I just, talk, yeah. I just told him about the air... Yarm yarmulkes. Yarmulkes, yeah. Oh, the yarmulkes. You didn't can talk you, about can that. You tell him, that. Can you tell him about the air? We, uh, <laughs> we do sell Kiss Air guitar strings. Do you have a picture? Uh, are they out now? Or I'll go, oh, yeah, the people buy cases. Wow. Kiss <sighs> Air guitar strings. He loves Siri, by the way. No, I don't know. There good. is a parent Siri. thing. Parents love Siri. Well, you know, they... It, she, I can't see my phone anyway, so the type doesn't talk better. back. <laughs> Yeah, she does. Do That's I have my point. mother's hips? Where she does this talk mean? back. She goes, like, I don't, don't want to talk to you. Just ask, her what her, ask her to rap to you. You ever hear that? Uh, let me see if there's... I don't think we <laughs> she have... She does. Does she? Yeah. What do you call me, Siri? Yeah, huh? you don't have... We you don't, don't have... Uh, no. Beep, 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 no, I don't hear that. <laughs> anyway, the, the, here? anyway, the strings. Uh, so the strings uh -huh. are empty bags full of air. They're not allowed to talk, huh? They talk. Well, they're just, you know, they're helping. They're helping everything. So the air guitar strings... That's something that you're what selling. What do you call me, Siri? <laughs> well, we can't hear. Oh, God. What do you call me, Siri? Yeah, you're not getting signal. We're not getting signal. No. We need some signal in here. Um, He's the so ultimate dad. How do, just how do all dad. these uh, ideas come to fruition, Gene? I mean, like this soda company, were you sitting around one day and you were like, listen, we don't have our names on no, soda. No, truthfully, um, you get a lot more credit than you deserve or I deserve. I mean, Life happens to you while you're busy making your plans. It's up to you to recognize, oh, there's a ship about to leave harbor. I better put some stuff on it. Yeah. And uh, you don't you don't build a ship. You don't. You just take advantage of the situation. Sure. Right thing, right place, right time. Sounds like one of my business books. But in all seriousness, usually people come up to me. Hey, how you doing? You've got a long tongue, and my so did my dad. To, uh, You're my cousin. Yeah, a lot whatever. of people say, like, I Laugh, have a cousin. it's a joke. <laughs> it's a, a joke. Dad, there's no mics over there. Even if they did, they wouldn't. You wouldn't <laughs> I know, but them. she's taping. and We have a live audience. Yeah. You know, um, when you laugh, the, please, the please screen can shake. Please, like please ignore. So, uh, so the soda company, how did that come so about? So two, brother, two brothers, uh, Janik brothers, came up with their kids. Can I have my kid have an autograph? And I said, you know, give me some money. I'm Jewish. You know, all the usual right. stuff. Right. And I asked them. What do you guys do? Oh, we're in the soda business. You're in the soda. You work at Coca-Cola. No, no, we have our own. We're third-generation soda makers, upstate New York. And I became fascinated by the idea, and actually tasted some of their sodas, and they were good. Reminded me of vintage. And they don't use sugar. They use cane sugar, no preservatives, and any of that. You know, like processed sugar, yeah. Processed. Yeah. And the bottles are cool. They're like kind of well, they, no, that came later. Right. That was your and idea. so I told him, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a JV joint venture. Yep. I'm going to take half the company. I own everything. I own the, I decide everything. And I'll make you guys millionaires in a year or so. And we'll get you in 7-Eleven before you know, which is almost impossible. So the, you may see it uh, on the internet and all that. Uh, or GeneSimmons.com. You can order cases of this stuff. Um, so I own the money back logo and decided to do money, put it, put it on sodas. Yeah. And called Joe DePinto, the CEO of 7-Eleven, flew down there, and I said, Joe, this is the real deal. You know, take me for my word. And he ordered millions of <laughs> cases. Amazing. And then we went to Wegmans and Tops. Look, uh, business is done via relationships and trust. And if you ever cross the line of being unethical or immoral, whatever, w within the business framework... Of course. The word spreads right away. No so question. we're about to launch. You have no idea. I have a deal with the, the largest car uh, company that makes the insides, all the doors for Volvo and the vodka line and a, just a Amazing. ton of stuff. And I don't drink or get high yeah. or anything. No, you, should, I, you actually should be on Shark Tank because I think you'd be great. Do you like actually, that show? Actually, Mark, that was Mark Burnett's show for me. It was originally offered to me when it was called Dragon's Den. Oh, right. In London, it was called Dragon's Den. Right. 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 And he was going to take over the rights. Yeah. And we negotiated right up until contract. Mm -hmm. I was going to be the Trump 
of the, you know, the right. bad guy. Mr. Like, in essence, Mr. Wonderful. Sure. And he was going to pay me 80 grand per episode. Right. And I Jesus said, Christ, I can't man. buy my mother lunch for that. Because <laughs> uh, if we step up on stage with Kiss, we get a million to $3 million. Okay, all right, all right. So it, <laughs> Jesus, it's, uh, Jesus. Can, can you raise a little bit? Or give me a piece of the back end. Sure. I don't mean... Right, right. Nowadays, the actual you can't back say, end. Right. can't say that anymore. <laughs> right. Everything would be moved on such this show. a miserable All right, enough, world. Enough, enough. So, enough. are there any products that you haven't done yet? Because you've done coffins, well, yeah, condoms, yeah, we haven't, toilet, we haven't done toilet kiss bowls? crack. Kiss crack. Okay, that's next. I didn't yeah. say so. We oh, just haven't done. Just it. haven't done. But, but it, we, we do kiss condoms. We do kiss caskets. We'll get you coming. We'll get you going. Right. There's no. That's a legitimate you joke. You're not getting away with that. <laughs> that's just, we also have a kiss urn because. Hope I everyone. mean, literally, if you want ashes, you have it too. Hope everyone wow. put ashes in seats. I saw Kiss say that sighing, word. Sighing I saw Kiss deeply. refrigerator the other day. Do you guys yeah, get have, paid yeah. for that? Okay, I wasn't sure if that was yeah, a license or what not. What just came in because everybody needs it. God help us. <laughs> it's about the length of this table. The Kiss beer pong table. Oh, we need that for sure. By the way, it's selling like hotcakes. <laughs> so this, Whoever uh, came up just with that? So this, uh, this is why I'm in therapy this whole <laughs> right. this is Well, to take it back to music for a minute, you have your final tour next year. It's called uh, the end of the... You're, you're going on a final tour? No, no you, Kiss you is going are. on a final tour. Smart. Uh, <laughs> or maybe you are. It's called the end Smart. of the road tour, 2019. Um, and I mean, when you still... I mean, obviously, I know the Beatles are a huge inspiration to you. Are there people that you met like in the last 20 years that you like Paul McCartney, Ringo, where you were still starstruck? That doesn't oh, really happen. Oh, sure. You got to tell the Who Ringo. are those people? You got to tell the Ringo story. Poor Ringo. Uh, <laughs> I'd, I'd met him in the 70s. Where, uh, it was a roller skating rink. I was at the time going out with uh, somebody in L.A. You guys would know. And <laughs> Share? Sh okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and so it, that used, well, it used to be hot, and it should come back because it's kind of fun, although I can't. Skating, disco mm, skating. Yes. They'd have music on, and everybody would skate yeah. around and around. And so everybody was there. All the stars that millennia have no idea who they sure. Ursula Andress and all that kind yeah, of yeah. stuff. And I can't skate. So I'm sitting on the side just watching everybody go by, and she's sort of, hi, everybody. And over my shoulder, I see two teenage guys, sort of long hair. One of them's wearing a glitter kiss t shirt like that. Yeah. And I'm going, okay, I'll give my autograph. I'm kind of a big deal and, you know, all that stuff. <laughs> and and as they're coming, one talks like this, you know, with my nasal passages blocked and all that. And the other guy says, yeah, man, we're busy, you know, all that. And all I remember is, <gasps> I remember the air going out because right behind them, Ringo started to walk up. And I was uh, you know, you're trying to, what am I going to say and stuff? And Ringo puts his arms around, I hope me boys are being nice to you. It was this. Amazing. Yeah. Surreal. Yeah. And I wanted to slap, bit slap these little pricks <laughs> because their father's a beetle. What are you doing with me? He's a beetle. <laughs> Why are you wearing a kiss shirt? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Same thing I'm with Barry Gibb. You know, the BG things were playing Florida. We're, we're going to talk about Barry Gibb in a moment. Too. Oh, but my hold, God. But hold on. But hold on. So you, you, what did you do to Ringo? So I saw him again later at a party, uh, uh, two decades later, and uh, Ringo's walking through the crowds, and it's all star-studded. I, I could, are you allowed to say fuck? Yeah, you can. I can. <laughs> you can, I can't, but you can. Let's say I you could can. give a fuck who's there and everything. You know, you treat people, right. every, the Pope's got a poop, and so do you, and so right. there's the That's equalizer. True. Yes. It always comes back down to that little kid when you used to play with it on your face. Boop. All right. Anyway. <laughs> he did. <laughs> back to the point. He did. Back to the, back to the story. And True. so uh, Ringo's coming over to say hello. And I'm eating salads. And, I, uh, and Shannon had never seen Ringo before, his mom. And I'm eating salads because I really love that shit. <laughs> right. uh, kill me now. <laughs> and it's, uh, you know, the dark salad type. I don't even know what they are. Okay. And, Kale, yeah. something. I just had something. And so Ringo walks over, and I, again, I get overcome because that music meant so much to me. Yeah. And I pick him up off the ground like a little puppet <laughs> because Ringo's about 5'6", five, 5'7", five, right. and I'm 6'2", yeah. which is how I feel like when he... And I pick him up <laughs> off the ground, and I'm holding him like this, and I'm smiling like this with a big Godzilla-sized spinach thing hanging <laughs> between my teeth. And I go... Yeah, I would love it. <laughs> you know, you mean so much stuff. to me, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. And, he, and Ringo said, would you mind putting me down? <laughs> because I felt his legs, you know, kind of moving around. <laughs> um, excuse me, grown man. Can you put this other grown man down? He was, he was a sweetheart and, you know. 
So, so yeah, maybe he, maybe he, the he Beatles turned, and, and Jimmy Page and Robert he, he Plant. Turned, he turned around and, of course, you know, Mom goes like, you didn't see the tree growing out of your <laughs> mouth. And he goes, what? <laughs> yeah. So no. it's safe to say it's Zeppelin and the Beatles for you, maybe, the people that you Well, look, no, there are so many, so many. Uh, uh, important yeah, if you had people. To pick, if Beatles, Beck? but who's, who's number two? I know Beatles number one. I don't actually know for you. I, said, I have to think about that. You, for yourself. <laughs> I God. didn't say that. I said Jeff Beck or Zeppelin. But it is interesting to note. People you like, I mean, just people who It is interesting to note how dire... I think uh, music has come not because there isn't talent. There's sure. enormous amount of talent out there. It's because there's no record industry. It's just chaos. Right. Because kids are downloading everything yeah. and fostering. So new bands don't get a chance. So play this game. 1958 until 1988 is 30 years. Yep. Got Elvis Presley, The Beatles, The Stones, Hendrix. You could go on with hundreds Zeppelin, of hundreds of yes. classic yeah. forever bands. And th then you've got... Dylan and U2, Prince, Bowie, uh, even the disco thing, you have Madonna, and the hard rock thing, you got ACDs, maybe Kiss, Metallica, U2, they're all there. Man. From 1988, I discovered them. Yeah. From 1988 <laughs> until today, that's 30 years, who's the new Beatles? There isn't. You have fuck Dado, all. Dado, Dado, don't you know? Don't you know? Exist. I, don't you know the answer? Do you Radiohead. Know the answer? It's One Direction, obviously. <laughs> Well, it, a lot of pe a lot of uh, yeah. now, all, all jokes all jokes aside, that Harry Styles album is awesome. It is a great album. Do you very think, good. Do you very think good. that social media has killed that, or is it? Uh, no, it's not you, social media. It's okay. the fans. The fans, right? Is, yeah, I, well, was, I, I, I think uh, I've heard. I've heard. Had your Ruben, dad heard Greta Van Fleet? I've heard Ruben and a couple people great. go on record about oh. this, where they they say. Uh, it's it's the Wild West with all the pros and cons of the Wild West. So right. there's like I mean there's people like Chance the Rapper who came up and great. became successful yeah. with no financial backing of any kind as far as I understand it. I mean he he just became popular virally and then now he, he won Grammys and that's the way and I think there's two other people recently who did something like that. But he's so there's, there's, there's that money, but yeah. that's also like you know you're you're a fish in a giant school and so it's like who who knows. There's no, it's hard to find a system around you to to groom. Like, you know, when Hendrix was discovered by the guy, like the, the animals, the guy from the animals who- Jess Chandler. Jess Chandler, who took him to London and, and sort of like groomed him and, and like, here's what you should do. It's hard to find sort of really in-depth in development deals like that now. Yeah. So like it's-, it's And hip hop in a way has become the new punk rock, rock I would call and roll. It, I would call I mean, it the new punk you know, rock. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd call it. No, it's I wouldn't call, no, I wouldn't call it punk rock because content. it's successful. Right. And punk rock, except for right, one or two right. bands, was a yeah. disaster. Just in the sense that it's a- uh, Lyrically, yeah. Just in the sense it's a bit rebellious and, uh, you know, it's- uh, wah, wah, wah. Show me the money. <laughs> All this, It's sure, eclectic. Sure, sure. It's art artsy. <laughs> yeah, you're talking, you got to talk to me about that. Well, you guys have always done stuff differently. You just released The Vault not long ago. We actually- the largest the box set of all time. Uh -huh. 167 tracks. Physically largest. 50 never, years of music. Never released. Never released. And you would actually deliver it to people If you pay me $2,000 a pop. Which is incredible. Well, I mean, what were people's reactions when you showed up at the doorstep? Can I have one? <laughs> They're like, <laughs> can you come in for dinner? I mean, how long no, did it's you not, it, More pragmatically speaking, as I travel around the world doing whatever, yeah. we put an afternoon aside and whoever in that area orders it, we have a dinner or a thing or a get-together. And you do that. Because when I was a kid, Elvis didn't come by and say, hey, how do you like my new record? You Pretty know? cool. It was uh, artists were kept at a distance. Absolutely. And I want to change that. And by the way, they continue to sell and all that. Or you can have the Gene Simmons um, experience. I come to your home. Your mom bakes me apple I've pie. I've lived that experience. It's really, <laughs> That's it's really life, uh, right? interesting. And you, <laughs> and you give me yeah. 50 grand to come right. over. Yeah, That's I did it. that too. Yeah, When I came out of the womb, I literally handed him 50 You didn't grand. have to pay for that, which is No, great. I'm still, I'm paying it off right now. <laughs> I'm paying it off. So you just, you just finished the solo tour. You got the, the band tour next year, right? A Gene, yeah. I also have a Gene Simmons band. Gene Simmons band, right? You just finished when the solo not, tour. I like, to, I like to work every day because if you take the point of view that you're looking for a job, you're going to miss the point. You have Absolutely. to love labor. And the and I have a right to a job. No, bitch, you don't. You don't have a right to anything. You're lucky and you're blessed if you have a job because there are tens of millions of people that have no jobs. True. And this, I have the, you know, the entitlement thing. That makes me furious. I agree with that. I think this generation doesn't like to work as hard. But, I mean, is there is this oh, the they, final? You, you just went on the hit list. Yeah. Yeah. Twitter. Oh. Twitter's Nineteen year old for you. kids going. I, I don't like I, that. I agree, I agree with that one. I think there's a lot, of, but, I, especially in Hollywood. Jesus. Well, I mean, I mean, late. It's just people who think that they deserve Grammys when they roll over in bed. Yeah. Yeah. That means nothing. Yeah. Keep your Grammys. Give me. I just mean they deserve awards. I'm for a New, getting up I'm in a New morning, Yorker. You know? Don't forget. So we work in New York. Yeah, we work right. hard. But is this the final final tour? Do you really? Yeah, think? Because you know, bands. The answer is yes, and I'll tell you why. 
it's always interesting marketing when you say I promise, you know, and all that. But, you know, I wear, Kiss is the hardest working band in show business, period. It doesn't mean we're the best, although we call ourselves that. Right. But I wear about seven inch platform dragon boots. Each one weighs 10 or 11 pounds. That's 20 plus pounds on the legs. Sure. You know, it's like working out with bowling balls. Yep. Then on top of that, there's another 30 pounds or so between the armor and but the But we stuff. both like cake, so you got to, you know, you take it. And so <laughs> if, you put, if you put Jagger and Bono, both great, in my outfits, they'd, they'd like little girls. They'd, they'd fall down and go boom. I mean, boom. to be fair, if I tried to do Jagger's uh, aerobics routine he does every before every tour, I'd probably fail. That's too. great. Yeah, but yeah, he, he doesn't have to, you know, he carries his 85-pound right. weight. He's wearing a T-shirt and, and jeans. It's different. No, but they, they can't do this. And I got to spit fire and fly through the air and all yeah. that. It is physically exhausting. And still have hair on my head. Thank you. <laughs> right. Lots more on my back. Now I comb. I put parts in. <laughs> Help. And Someone some, help. On, and help some me. on my butt help. as a cushion. Help. So, so, and so, so the idea is, go out with some dignity. Could the band ever carry with on what? without you guys? You think dignity. the name? What is that word? Make more money. <laughs> okay. But interesting concept, there, Gene. Could the band ever carry on without you sure. guys? So you think of that's course. a possibility? Okay. Of course. Yeah. You know, we've had ten different lineups. ACDC's had twenty-two or so, mm. and there are bands that tour now that sell out things with different lead singers. And different guitar players. It, uh, at it's, the end of the day, it comes. It it is about the material and about the culture. True. Because there are better musicians, uh, jazz musicians, that will never be able to make the money that people who are less talented but have charisma. That thing, you can go to school to learn guitar or bass. Again. You can't learn your exciting, your yeah. charisma. There's no school for that. 100%. Walk this way, do that. Way. You just. Have it or you don't. Yeah, I totally agree. That's incredible. There's a lot of things to buy. We got the sodas, oh, the cannabis company. We didn't really touch base on too much, but obviously. So go to Invictus-MD.com. Okay. And buy the book, obviously. The book. Uh, go to Gene Simmons Vault.com for the largest box set of all time. Go to Gene Simmons Moneybag.com. Sodas. We have a film company, a restaurant chain, Rock and Brews Restaurant. We have... Uh, Two of them at I'm LAX. Gonna I'm going to take, take a nap. I'm going to take a nap. Well, this also is an exclusive. Thank you guys for coming on. Because you wait, guys wait. haven't done. I'm launching oh, Liberty ahead. Natural yes. Foods, okay. which is going to be one of the largest. Oh yeah, he's doing like a Whole Foods Vegetable. thing now. I want to uh -huh. just blow my head off. <laughs> Vegetables. He's literally making. Yeah. Ve he showed me pictures of like celery. Wow. And shit with his face on it. Yep. It's just celery. But this is so much. There's nothing else in the box. It's I don't celery. Feel like you guys haven't done this together in the last 10, 15 years. So this yeah. is kind of an exclusive thing. This is so cool. So what yeah. do you call me, Siri? <laughs> I don't think that's going to work. Help. Help. We need internet you don't here. Have we don't have Wi-Fi. We need Wi-Fi Where's the here. vaudeville cane Maybe to we're just gonna... drag him off the, with a little <laughs> the curled <laughs> <laughs> So, uh... I mean, maybe, uh, did you get what you wanted? Nick, yeah. maybe you can finish answering who I am, sure. and that's it. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah Scott Lips is uh, the the ultimate ah! the ultimate socialite. <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate socialite, and uh, I win. He, uh, oh Jesus! Did I get you or not? I think. Oh come on, that's great. <laughs> he he likes whoopee cushions and stuff. Anyway. I love it. See what just happened? We got. What's uh, up? What's up? Are you gonna do what that on your friends? No, I don't care about that. Are you gonna do that to your friends? I you gotta be sincere. I'm oh, very I, I got him. I got him real good. You did. I got him real good the other day, where he's just walking into his office. You did. And I saw I I, I crouch on the ground and I put my head around the door frame. So yep. you look down, you just see a severed head, and I go, <laughs> and he just get, loses his mind. So we finally gonna hear Siri talk here. Siri, I don't what think do you so. call me? You're my Lord and Redeemer. You see, that's the only my thing. Lord and Redeemer. Wow. That's the only way. That's to the only thing that really matters. Ah, ah. There we go. We cracked the smile here. <laughs> So thanks so much. We got one quick little game we're going to play on the couch called Connections with some old vinyl, Gene, that I brought out for you. So I want to talk about these old vinyl records for five minutes. You know, everybody talks about the expanded vinyl. It's a real hit. I, no, it just means like the, the, the albums. The album. But but I, I, have know, albums I, I understand so, yeah. that. But the modern vinyl scene, this, if you sell 5,000, it's a big deal. That's true. That's true. So I'm um, so excited to have Gene and Nick Simmons on. Thank you guys so much. And we're going to jump to the Connections game in two seconds. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks. I get out. Guys, appreciate it. Thanks. I get out.